Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here. And in this lesson, I'm going to continue on our C++ quick start, just showing you some features of C++. Again, these will be features maybe you've seen in other programming languages and so on. Now, for this series or this sort of quick uh, lessons that I'm doing. It's probably not a in-depth tutorial in C++. For that, go ahead and see my C++ series for that. Uh, but let's just go ahead and get started so we can, again, get up and running for C++ because maybe you're taking it in a course or something of that nature. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just open up another live coding uh, session here. I'm going to use a tool called Tmux so I can split my window here. And I'll just create uh, some code here. Here is a main uh, C++ file here. And I'll make it just a little bit bigger so you can hopefully see. Now, as we saw last time, every C++ program has a main function. That's the entry point of our program. And oftentimes, we'll want to include libraries such as IO stream for input, output, stream. That's how we read in data and uh, can write out data um, using IO stream. And we also learned previously about something called vector. Okay. Now, in this lesson, I want to go ahead and just talk about one of the fundamental things we do in programming, um, which is create our own data types. Okay. So that's really what this lesson is going to be about: creating our own data types. And what this means to folks, or is going to mean to us in this lesson, is classes, or in C++. Uh, structs as well as another keyword for doing this. There's a minor difference between classes and structs, um, which I'll get into, but let's just go ahead and create one. All right, so the basic idea here, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and just use uh, or create a class here. Uh, and I'm just going to call this class container. It's just going to hold things. Okay, so it's its own type and it can hold information. So class is the keyword, uh, and container is uh, the name of this new type here. Okay, so in programming languages, you see things like int or you know float, for example, int i equals seven, int f equals you know, three point one four, or something like that. Um, these are the different types. So now we're going to have one called container. You can call it my container or whatever, um, and it will be able to do things. Now, classes themselves consist of a collection of member functions and member variables, okay, or actions, which are the member functions, or attributes, which are the member variables. Okay, so let's just go ahead and highlight this here. So our container class, which we've just created, container, it's going to have actions that it can do, okay, and these are otherwise known as member functions and attributes, okay, or or the actual data, okay? And sometimes we abbreviate this or call this member variables, okay? So class really is a blueprint, okay? That's the way that folks like to talk about classes. It's a blueprint because I can have multiple containers. I can have my container here on line uh, 14. Uh, I can have my second container here, and they're totally different, okay? They're both the same type of thing, uh, but they are different instances of this particular class, okay? So just getting a little bit of that terminology here. Okay, now the first thing that we have to do when we use a class is say what's going to be uh, available outside the world. So usually we do this with public. We have other specifiers like private, which make things invisible to the outside world and only visible within uh, this scope of this class. Uh, for now, I'm just going to make everything uh, public. Okay. Uh, now that is the distinguishing difference between a struct. If I use the struct keyword, which I mentioned, then I don't have to type public because everything by default is visible. Okay. Now for simplicity for this lesson, and since this is a quick start series to get you started with C++, I'm just going to make this a struct so we don't have to worry about public, private, protected, these types of things. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to define here is a constructor, which is a special member function. And what this is, is the first function that'll be called as soon as we create my container here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just print out a message saying container created. Okay, or even better, let's use the linguistics, container constructed. Okay, and then I can put a slash n here to end the line, or as we saw standard, endline uh, to create a endline. 
Okay, so let me make this just a little bit smaller so everything fits. And let's go ahead and try to compile this. So G++ or maybe Clang++ or if you're following an, an IDE, just go ahead and hit run and you should be good to go here. So G++, uh, the name of our source file, how we want to output it as program here. Um, and oops, looks like I'm uh, getting an error. So let's go ahead and see uh, what this is. Um, and well, I've misnamed this constructor. Okay, so this constructor has to be called the same thing as the type here. Okay, I'm going to leave in my mistakes so you learn how to fix some of these things. Um, but now it should compile. And when I run it, you'll notice that when we are creating this type here, we have something called a constructor and it's running this actual code here. Now we can have parameters in our constructors like we uh, would any other function uh, if we wanted here and as many as we wanted. Um, by default, I'm going to leave it blank here. Okay, so with the constructor, there is also something called the uh, destructor. And you mark with a little tilde mark and then it needs to be named the same thing as the function. And this is the function that's called when we are destroying our container. So container destroyed. Okay, this is actually a really important part of C++, the language, in that uh, we have this sort of lifetime of this uh, object here. Okay, my container. So its scope is within these two curly braces. You can see that they're highlighted here. And when it gets destroyed, so when it hits line 24, or otherwise when this function's returning, uh, we should see container destroyed printed out. So let's go ahead and compile run and we'll see that the container was constructed and it was destroyed. Okay, so that's actually pretty nice and it's well defined. We know those constructors and destructors will execute so we can uh, take care of anything we want on creation and destruction of this object. Okay, now let's actually do something more interesting with this container uh, and reflect back on some of our previous knowledge where we had that uh, vector here that we learned about, okay? Uh, so vector of, say, integers, uh, and I'm just going to give it, um, you know, some name here. And what this is, is a member variable of our class uh, container. Every instance of a container, let me make this a capital C, um, has its own uh, M vector, okay? Um, so that's what you need to know about uh, classes. So again, it's a blueprint and every class has these actions. Some of them are special like this constructor or the destructor that is automatically called when objects created or destroyed. Um, and then we also have these uh, attributes or the data, which is in this case, a vector stored within container. Okay. And it's publicly accessible, right? Uh, because we have a struct here. Uh, if I want, I can be explicit and just say, hey, this is publicly accessible. And that means I can access that vector, my container dot m vector, and then do some of those actions that we learned about in the previous lesson here. So push back some number here. So let's go ahead and uh, compile this and run it. And it works fine. OK. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and add some more uh, actions or member functions to this class. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make our code a little bit bigger just so you can see more things on the screen here. Um, and instead of um, this time, I'm going to actually encapsulate or hide M vector. So I can't just do the dot here. OK, um, so the way I can do this is either by just making things private like this. And then let's try to compile and just see what happens. Uh, then I will get an error message because it's saying, hey, uh, this struct here, container I have, um, when I'm trying to access vector, that's this thing in the private part of our code, uh, we're not allowed to do that, okay? Because maybe we want to hide some implementation detail, okay? So that's the actual uh, reasoning for this. Okay, so typically what we might do instead is write some sort of uh, function here, like um, some other member function or action, like add data. Okay, maybe these are integers that we want to add here. And we would just take care of m vector, uh, push back uh, i into our vector. Okay, and maybe just some other function here for printing data. Okay, so that's again what we've been working with with vectors here. Uh, in this case, I don't need any parameters. And I'm just going to do m vector, uh, or let's, let's use one of these loops here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, just do for int i equals 0, i less than and vector 
dot size i plus plus and we'll just print out all the data on a separate line here so m vector at i and an m line here okay uh, so these are two member functions they're publicly available so i can call them so let's go ahead and refactor our code a little bit and this is kind of nice um, because then I'm not exposing that M vector there. I can just call um, add data here. Uh, add data uh, one. And I get to name it however I like. And um, let's just go ahead at one, two, three. My container dot uh, print data here. Let me move this so it's not totally at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> there so you can see it. Okay. So there's the body of our code. Let's go ahead and try to compile this. It compiles. If I run it. We can see that our constructors uh, called. We add our data here, one, two, three. Uh, that's what's printed out. And then our container is destroyed. OK, so we have our custom type here. Uh, we can create another instance of this. So let's go ahead and just copy this block um, and do this again. And we'll go ahead and see that my container uh, two here, uh, when I print it out, let's put in some negative numbers here uh, and run the same code. You can see our first container is constructed, where we add stuff, uh, print out the data. Then we construct another container that's done here. And then we eventually print out the stuff. And then each of our containers are destroyed here. OK, maybe we would want to name these containers or something um, to, to do something more interesting. In fact, let's go ahead and do that uh, just so I can show you a different constructor here. So what we're going to do to name each of these containers is use the string class. So string. And in C++, we don't have a built-in type for string, but instead we do have a library for the standard string. OK, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. As you can imagine, it is just called um, standard string. And I'm just going to call this m underscore name. And again, I'm prefixing these things with m just so I know in my head that it's a member variable. Um, so that's, that's the idea here. OK, so now I'm going to modify my constructor. So it takes in a parameter, standard string, name here. And instead of just saying the container was constructed, I'll go ahead and print out two things, the name here. Um, and I'll go ahead and just set my m name equal to name here. OK, so this is a really simple way to do things um, in C++. Um, now, as soon as I compile this, um, there's a problem. Uh, well, what's the problem here? And as we're debugging C++ errors, usually we scroll to the top and it says no matching function call for container colon colon uh, container. And we'll get to what that colon colon thing sort of means here. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at our code. Well, here's the constructor that I have. And well, my constructor takes one parameter now. So I should probably update that when I am constructing my object. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, put our parentheses here and put the name here. I'm just going to call this my container. And we're going to have to do that for this uh, as well. My container two. OK, and I'll go ahead and uh, put that uh, recompile and rerun. And now we can see when we construct our object, it's actually printing out the name so we can sort of keep track of it. OK, um, and let's go ahead and do that for the uh, destructor. And um, let's go ahead and make sure we're using our member variable here. And we'll go ahead and do that again here. Um, name destroyed. Okay. All right. So now we can see our containers are being destroyed. Now it's kind of interesting the order that they're being uh, constructed in, um, which again is a nice thing. We can see that the last thing that was constructed is the first thing that's destroyed. Um, so we have this sort of defined order for us. Okay. All right, so we've learned a little, a tiny bit. Uh, we know that there's a string or string capabilities now. Uh, we've got constructors, destructors. Um, we can have uh, vectors within our classes, um, and then we can have as many instances of these classes as we want here. So the last thing that I want to do in this lesson is sort of uh, organize things. So I'm going to type out tree here, and you can see my uh, hierarchy here for my program. In fact, this probably isn't helpful for most folks. So let me just open up the folder. You can see these are the files that I have. I have my main CPP and then the uh, executable that I have created. Now, what we really want to have here, because uh, you can imagine we might have lots of 
structures here is we, we want to move this into its own file, this container here. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is copy all this code or, or cut it out here. So that's not in our code. And let's go ahead and split this window here. And I'm going to create something called container.hpp. Paste this in. Uh, but I'm not quite done yet. And I'm going to split this window again and create something called container.cpp. Okay. And let me go ahead and move this here a little bit more. Um, and let's see. Um, this, this is what we've uh, sort of got here. Um, and let me make it just a little bit uh, smaller here, just so things kind of fit a little bit nicely. Um, I've got uh, in this file here is my header file. Again, if you're not familiar with Vim, I'll just highlight this. This is the container.hpp. That's a new extension. Uh, container.cpp is empty here. And at the bottom left is our main.cpp. Again, that's uh, this file down here. OK, so why am I putting things in different files? Well, this is sort of what we've been doing um, or, you know, without really learning about it when we're including uh, vector string IO string. These are files that exist somewhere that bring in uh, different structures or classes, OK, or functions or, you know, different things in our code here. Um, so what I want to do here is um, have this header file here serve as a interface that says, hey, you have a container. C++ files always contain implementation, OK? So that's going to be the actual implementation of this constructor, this add data function, and so on, OK? So let me write it out just so we can um, see here uh, some notes here. Um, let's see, header files. And you'll see these with different extensions, .hpp or .h contain uh, interface. Okay, it's declaring or providing declarations that something exists. Okay, and that's the idea there. I'll kind of move out of the way. Uh, source files, source files. These are .cpp files. Again, sometimes you'll see different extensions .cxx, .c if you're using C, and so on contain implementation implementation okay uh, so that's how we sort of split things up here okay so let's actually uh, do the work now here and uh, I think this will be a little bit more clear with the example so what I'm basically going to do is um, copy out all this stuff for now uh, and paste it into the C++ file okay and I'll indent it so it's a little bit uh, nicer here um, and then, you know, really it's easy as for us to just work on the header first, this interface here, and say that we have a uh, constructor here, container. So basically this thing that's right here. In fact, I'll just copy it uh, and paste it in here. And basically what this is saying is for this structure, hey, I have a constructor and this is what it looks like. I don't know anything about the details, how it's actually implemented, but I do just have this constructor that takes one parameter. Okay, so someone could quickly look at this header file and say, okay, these are some of the things we can do. Okay, so let's go ahead and repeat that work here. Um, oops, let me uh, put all that uh, back. Um, and make sure that we have our uh, destructor as part of the uh, interface here. I'm just going to copy this here. Um, in Vim users, um, you know, there's better ways to do this, but I'm just going to paste it in for now. In case you're using other IDEs, this is basically what you're going to do. Void, add data, int i, and then we had void, print data, uh, and that was it. Okay, so this just provides, again, the interface. Okay, uh, this is the interface. Okay, um, and we do, since part of our interface has string and vector, we do need to include in uh, string and vector. It doesn't really matter the order here, um, just so that uh, this file knows about uh, these things here. OK? All right. So um, what do we do in this file here? Well, this file is almost done. In fact, um, let's, let's try to compile it. Let's just see what happens here. Well, uh, 
Okay, so let's compile this. G++ main dash O prog. Um, okay. Um, well, let me uh, actually save all these. Save this, save this, and save this. Okay, now let me compile because uh, now we're getting some errors here. And it's saying container was not declared in this scope here. Container, my container. Okay, so this, this file here, main doesn't know about container, so we have to include it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and include uh, container dot HPP. Okay, and the name has to match here and the location. Okay, so um, why is this in quotation marks? Well, uh, if I look at this, uh, file structure, if I put something in quotation marks, I'm specifying where the path is. And this main file here, main CPP, uh, container.hpp is in the same path here. Okay, so that's the relative path. I could also technically write it out something like this, dot slash, or if I had a, you know, home slash mic or something like this directory, um, I could do that. But um, typically, you just have one path here. Um, Later on, I'll talk about compilation and so on. Uh, but let's let's try this. Let's see if this works here. Okay. Uh, so now I'm getting a bunch of other errors. It hasn't quite worked. It's saying undefined reference to container colon colon add data. Okay. So so what's going on here? I've included this interface, um, and it's saying undefined, you know colon colon add data. I'll just look at this one for example. Okay. Um, so the container colon colon part is saying, okay, within the actual container class, uh, the colon colon is something called the scope operator, tells us where to find things. Uh, we don't know where add data is. Okay, well, we have it over here, but we've just got to uh, compile it. Okay, so it knows about it. Okay, so what if I add in my G++ now container.cpp, okay, to my list here, I'll hit enter. Um, and we're almost there, but still some uh, error messages here. <laughs> All right, so let's let's figure this out. Uh, well, again, I don't know where to find this this function or where it exists, right? I've got to tell the scope. So container colon colon, okay, uh, and container colon colon here, and container colon colon add data, and we do this one here. Container colon colon print data. Okay, so let me try to compile this. Uh, we're a little bit closer. Uh, but what don't we know about here? Well, we've got to still include container.hpp here. Okay? Um, so that it knows about where this interface is. Um, now, we're not quite done. I'm going to save you one error here. Because there is a problem. Because when I'm including a file here, container HPP, and including a file HPP here, what I'm essentially doing is just copying and pasting this code into here. That's what includes doing. It's just copying and pasting when we're including it. Uh, and I'm also copying and pasting it here. So do you think there's going to be a problem if I copy and paste the same exact file in two locations when I compile? Uh, the answer is yes, it's going to get duplicated. So the way to prevent this is by using something called a guard in C++, a header guard, where you say uh, with the hash or the pound mark again, if uh, not defined, uh, container, and you can make up whatever this name is. It just has to be something unique. So usually I do all caps, whatever the class name is, underscore HPP for the file. So if that's not defined, then define it. And when I have an if statement, I need a uh, end if at the very bottom. End if. Okay. Um, and that will save us here. Okay, so let me go ahead and try to compile. Um, hmm, still a few other errors. Well, it's complaining about ENDL, C out. Um, so what haven't we included here? Uh, well, IO stream, right? That's where those functions are found. Um, and usually I try to include things like IO stream, for example. Um, it's only used in this CPP file, so that's where it gets included, right? We don't have to put it in the header because I'm not doing any IO streamy stuff in, in the header there. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, it works, it compiles just like before, and just like that, we've created our own data type, um, and we have sort of the right uh, project structure here. And here's the CPP, the HPP, uh, and the main. Now, typically some things that you might do here are going to be to put header files in an include folder, 
your source files in a source folder and so on. And we'll get into that uh, sort of project organization stuff uh, perhaps in the next video here. Okay, so let me just uh, show you the hierarchy again. Um, and I want to keep these videos as short as possible, but this is sort of creating your own class, understanding a little bit about the syntax and the need for a constructor and a destructor. So folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope that's helping you with this sort of quick start in C++. I'm going to keep this series short. Again, the goal is you're taking a class in C++ and you just need to get ramped up uh, quickly so I can show you um, a bunch of the things so you can see them at least once and then you can read some tutorials or watch some other videos and that'd be helpful. Okay, of course, um, uh, my series is available if you want to see that, but again, I'd recommend going through these quick start ones uh, first and then looking at other resources. So if this has been helpful, make sure to uh, like the video, comment below if something's confusing, and I'm happy to help out. All right, until next time, uh, we'll see you soon.